Welcome to Tales from the Flip Side. This is the Modern Playbook team. We're going to bring you a round table. Uh, let's go around and introduce everyone on this uh, panel discussion. All right, Steve from My Bargain Comics. Can't wait to get going. Let's do it. Uh, Samson, Comic Book Journey. Uh, this is Ben, I'm Mr. Long Short, and I like bubblegum covers. This is Joe, uh, Red Hood Comics. Uh, I love pressing books. Hey, what's going on? Rich Taylor, a.k.a. Dollar. We're going to talk a little bit about Black Panther and Killmonger. Hey, this is Phil with uh, Vintage Comics and Toys. Ready to see some ghosts. And I'm Aaron. You can also catch me on Comic Book Food Chain. So to kick us off, let's kick off our new segment called Digging In With Dollar. Thanks, Aaron. And welcome to Digging In With Dollar. A few weeks ago, we had, um, we had a rough draft synopsis come out at Ryan Coogler. Um, went over with one of the returning actors from Black Panther Part 1 in which basically um, it came out to be very multiversey, so to speak. Um, this right here is a segment called Digging with Dollar, and we are going to go ahead and dig into some Black Panther 2 speculation. The first thing we're going to cover is this Sci-Fi Wire article that was uh, dropped uh, May 7th, 2021, around the same time the Rough Dress synopsis came out that Coogler read to a few of the returning actors. The speculation right now is Shuri is Black Panther. Also, you know, T'Challa being killed off or what have you. Killmonger and Michael B. Jordan was such a a, a wonderful delight to see and and it, it's a fanfare and, and and fan demand to bring him back as killmonger a lot of questions were were left unanswered because of the fact that eric killmonger was you know royalty and when he passed away or so we thought during the sunset at the end of black panther one well there was never a uh a, a royal ceremony or a funeral for royalty even though he was the bad guy there should have been a you know some kind of uh, uh, traditional royal uh, funeral for him and that wasn't shown so it left a lot of doors open so to speak this article right here by sci-fi wire basically um, is quoting uh, Angela Bassett who if you don't recall played Queen Ramada who was who is T'Challa and Shuri's mother. She was at the uh, Screen Actors Guild Awards <clears throat> accepting a, a, a nomination or what have you. She was with her husband, um, actor Courtney B. Vance. And this was a little earlier this year. And, she, and basically she was asked, um, you know, how much of the cast would be returning for Black Panther 2. And she replied, quote, I would assume so, she said, bef before her husband, the actor Courtney B. Vance, escalated her statement by adding her husband basically saying, like, yes, honey, tell him. But he said, quote, yes, just go ahead and say it. Yes, everyone will be there, including Michael B., unquote. Now, Feige re responded to that a few days later, which um, – he did not deny what what uh, Angela and her husband were saying about Michael B. and the rest of the crew. But uh, he basically said it's just a rumor, but he did not deny it. So later this uh, month, San Diego Comic-Con International, the famed Hall H stayed for surprising guest appearances. So if Jordan appears, hey, it could become possible and suppress anticipation for the rise of Killmonger as Black Panther. So the question is, and that's the question that's been on a lot of our minds, at least I've been getting crazy DMs about it for the last two and a half, three weeks. 
I know our friend Nick from Key Collector has been getting asked about it uh, multiple times. And um, we, the question is, has Eric Killmonger donned the Black Panther costume and mantle in comics? So here we go. So right here we have Black Panther 21. I, the first appearance of Eric Killmonger as Black Panther, known as Kill Panther, is actually in Black Panther 22. It's a full appearance and reveal. But I brought in 21 because I guess it would be a mention due to the fact that the, the traditional battle between T'Challa and Eric Killmonger is in this book. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but we're going to go over some slides before we get into the first appearance. So basically right here, um, this is basically after the fight. Killmonger, Killmonger was losing. They were going back and forth to Chala or what have you. And there's like a break in the fight. And Ross is basically trying to basically uh, get uh, Killmonger off of uh, T'Challa or what have you. And Killmonger knows that this is a battle for, for Wakanda, and he wants T'Challa to submit. So once that he sees that uh, T'Challa cannot submit because he's unconscious, he decides to go ahead and just rip the Black Panther mask off of T'Challa. And then on the, on the panel on the right is where he claims victory. Killmonger... The Black Panther. Uh, now this is the, I guess you could say the the aftermath. You have Ross and Brother Voodoo um, going back and forth, and they're looking at uh, T'Challa's body. He's in a, he, at this point, he's still unconscious. They're freaking out or what have you. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil the the panels and read it word for word, but you know you can figure it out. But Killmonger, in the meantime, he goes ahead and goes through with the ceremony kind of kind of similar to black panther part one um when when he beat t'challa in the uh in in the first fight the uh the elder the that is living gives him the black panther power so he could see the elders in the afterlife now here you go yeah black panther 22 now this is this is the book right here this is where you get your first in-story appearance of Kill Panther or Eric Killmonger as Black Panther in full costume and reveal. Panel on the right is basically T'Challa recovering. He's in a coma and Ross is basically freaking out, bummed out. He's, he's trying to figure out, you know, what he could do, but he knows that Wakanda tradition, um, you know, this is between two royal family members and it was a clean even battle he knows that he cannot get involved so you know he just has to stand as a good friend on his bedside and wait for him to recover down the book a little bit uh some really important parts we passed i'll let you guys read it once you get the book and then and i'll tell you if nothing comes out of this this is after after what i i've i, I discovered in this in this book and the next book I mean, these are must-haves. I mean, these these are very hard to find books, and this is a must-have story. So, going back into it, now you have Ross, who is speaking with the White Wolf, and this iteration of the White Wolf is Hunter, the original White Wolf. Um, he's basically, in his own words, telling him, you know, he can't get involved. It's Wakanda business, but. You know, he basically wants to make sure Killmonger doesn't turn Wakanda into a police state. I'm paraphrasing, like I said, um, he, in his own words. And he's asking um, Hunter the White Wolf, hey, can you help me out in keeping your ear to the ground? And why I, uh, you know, keep an eye over on T'Challa and uh, keep the, uh, the residents of Wakanda at bay. Now you have Jen Walters, She-Hulk here. And she's expecting to see T'Challa and she looks and on the right here, she realizes it's not T'Challa and you can see the reveal. The new Black Panther has arrived and that is Eric Killmonger as Black Panther. Now here, 
this is very important. The next book into the story arc, because this because it goes on for a few issues. Naturally, you'd think it's Black Panther 23, but it, no, that the reading order goes it's issue 21, first the, the the battle, and then the the mention, and then issue 22, you have the the appearance, the the full appearance and reveal. And then Deadpool number 44 from the 1997 series. It was released uh, 2000. Actually, this, I believe it was released on the same day as uh, Black Panther 22. This is Cat Trap Part 1. And CGC, other third-party companies, uh, grading companies, they it, it also um, online, when I looked up this book, all believe that this is... Uh, Black Panther, T'Challa, and there's a Killmonger appearance in the book, but they don't realize this is actually, that is 100% Eric Killmonger as Black Panther. Okay? This is your first cover appearance, second full appearance, but first cover appearance of Eric Killmonger as Black Panther, known as Kill Panther, the, the king of the Wakanda Guard, and the man who's holding the throne at this time. Uh, recently, um, last week, uh, Key Collector Comics went ahead and added this this book and this information to their database. It was also a part of Nick's Picks Top 10, in which um, there was a key alert for it. He went ahead and described when asked if Killmonger could step in as the Black Panther, Ryan Coogler reiterated that Eric died in the first Black Panther film, yet there's still speculative interest in the first appearance suited up as the Black Panther in full costume. Now, um, this, here's the speculation. The speculation is, okay, so let's assume that he's, he's dead, and I'm talking MCU speculation or Disney Plus speculation. Let's assume he, he really passed away. Well, with the multiverse in play, now you have a doorway, I guess you could say a, a road to Eric Killmonger from another, you know, Earth 1610, you know, 19999 or what have you from another um, uh, universe coming in and, you know, possibly um, taking on um, Chadwick Bosman's character in another battle. And I could see, you know, maybe that's a way they kill him off and he becomes Black Panther. Or if they do not do that, maybe Shuri becomes Black Panther and um, Killmonger challenges her. Or let's say something happened, you know, like like that. Uh, the, the article said, the Entertainment Tonight article said with um, um, uh, which uh, Angela Bassett uh, about, um, <clears throat> you know, the five year plan after the after uh, end game well did the snap did that have anything to do with uh killmonger possibly coming back what about when um bruce banner and iron man snapped as well um you know could could that of you know brought kill kill uh monger back uh, yeah that's it's it's a big time reach and i definitely don't believe that but a lot of people do in the community i'm not going to rip that um, there's no evidence to support that as of right now. I have looked into it, but there is evidence to support that there are different iterations of Killmonger within the multiverse. And with Michael B. Jordan, and you can go ahead and Google this, multiple articles saying that he is open to coming back as Killmonger. And he is very excited to work with Ryan Coogler again. I believe he worked with him on Creed as well, but as with on a Marvel property, this could be, you know, it's a, it's a $15, $20 book. This could be a book that literally explodes if that happens. And then don't forget about Deadpool 44 with the first cover appearance um, of uh, Kill Panther, Eric uh, Killmonger as Black Panther. That's an important book as well, and it, and with it, the way the market is uh, gravitating towards, I guess you could say, cover appearances, it seems like you know it could be a very important key. But let's say it, none of this does happen; these are still books that should be in everybody's collection as of last week. 
Thanks for uh, watching. Digging with Dollar. Ryan Coogler and, and uh, gave uh, Michael B. Jordan his first opportunity to act in a movie, right? It was Fruitville Station. And they've since yeah. done Creed. They've since done Creed, Black Panther, and they're working on another movie. They're very, very good friends. I find it hard to believe that he is not in play for Black Panther 2. I think they are ironing out a script. I think they are making sure that Michael B. Jordan is open uh, as far as timeline to shoot. I think this is in, in play big time. And you need an actor. He's not going to reply uh, reprise T'Challa. But, you know, like Feige said, Shuri, can she wear the mantle of the Black Panther uh, for a time in the movie? I, I would say so. But in order for this to work, you need a A-list actor to carry that yeah. mantle. Period. Totally and so, totally so if, if Michael B. Jordan is to play this, that would be the fifth film that these two do together. So if you already got four, what makes you think there's not going to be five? Yeah. And what, and what's I mean, Feige's reply in that, in that early May, 2021, uh, article after Angela Bassett, um, uh, leaked that information was, Oh, it's just a rumor. Like I said, he didn't deny it. it. And, uh, what else is is Faye gonna say? You know what I mean? I mean, he's not gonna spoil it this this early well, on. He, you know, so. so there there are trolls, right? So like, if he, you know, can you imagine if Feige said, "Yeah, we we want Michael B. Jordan"? Another studio is gonna offer Michael B. Jordan a shitload of money and make Michael rethink his uh, his uh, handshake deal with playing in the the next Black Panther movie. That's all in play. So if if you're a producer, and uh, it's it's cutthroat, so you never want to tip your hand as far as when you're going to start shooting and and what's going on. That's why you always keep it close to the vest because another studio will go in and swoop and say we absolutely cannot allow Michael B. Jordan to play back Black Panther because we don't want him going up against uh, the Joker Part Two. Because that's in play. Yeah. Makes sense. Good points, Joe. I want to give a shout out to Sean Manning for writing that article on sci fi. And then I also want to say use the code, promo code Flipside to get a two week free subscription to the Key Collector app. Hey, and a uh, shout out to Nick from Key Collector Comics. Um, we've been working together as a with the spec 10 it's been nothing but a smooth road it's been wonderful um he's been wonderful to me and to to all of us once you get to know him and you work with him you really see what kind of person he is he's truly a, a fun guy next we have a presentation from ben all right so this is a follow-up to a a segment on uh ghost books that we did about a month ago we call it uh, books you can't buy anymore um that's obviously a little bit tongue-in-cheek any book is for sale, uh, but the books on this list are particularly hard to come by. What we did for this list is the, the members of the Modern Playbook, they all threw out ghosts that were personal to them, books that they have hunted who, who um, that have been difficult to track down and find. So the books you're going to find this list aren't necessarily the, the biggest price books in the market or the most sought after. These are the books from from the crew here that that they've looked for that we've looked for that have evaded us you know part of the joy of this hobby is is the hunt and uh, there are lots of really cool books out there that are tough to come by but you don't have to pay you know you don't have to mortgage your house to buy uh, and that was really the the intention of this list um, which is not to say that some of them aren't expensive but um, but but the goal is wasn't necessarily to put up books that are that are bank breakers here so why don't we get right into it Okay, so so the first book on this list, and this is a this is a pretty big book for for people who who like rare variants. Um, this is Young Allies number six. Uh, this is a one hundred and fifteen by Art Adams. 
uh, this is not a cheap book. Uh, it's a seven hundred dollar book, and and that was frankly, you know, back in November, the last sale that we saw for this book uh, that I was able to identify. Uh, there's a mere twenty one on the census. Retailers only ordered about eleven thousand copies of this book, so one in fifteen on eleven thousand. That's a pretty low print run. What what I want to point out and make very clear here and a mistake that a lot of people make, right? So one in 15, right? So what's the ratio there? You have to take one over 16. That's how ratios work, right? It's you have to add the one to the bottom because for every 15, you can buy one of these. So it's one out of every 16 on 11,000 books. Now, people might take that ratio and put it on the 11,000. That's not right. You can't do it that way. Um, there's about 2,500 comic shops in America. The number I use to be conservative conservative when I do estimates, I use 2,000. Um, so if you have 11,000 books on average, right, for the 2,000 stores, they're ordering about five and a half copies a piece, most of which aren't qualifying for this. Um, so you can't take that 1 in 15 on the full 11,000. It doesn't work that way. Most stores who are buying this weren't buying enough to get this ratio. Now, the midtowns and the big stores, yes, they were. Uh, but the average shop wasn't, uh, which makes this book super scarce. Anybody else have any thoughts on this one? Is that ratio as a worst case scenario? Um, yeah, I mean, if like, you wanted to say, okay, what's the maximum? You could take that eleven thousand and do it, um, but 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 it's not likely that there's anywhere near that. With with only twenty one copies on the census, and this is a fairly highly sought after book, uh, more would have materialized at this point. Is, is my is sort of my uh, my belief around this one um but um but yeah there's probably not a bunch of these floating out there i really like the red hair <laughs> it looks really nice i mean it's not like your you know orange hair it's like the, the i don't know i love the cover great yeah cover. i mean our adams is is a modern master and um you know if you collect firestar covers i guess this is the one to have yeah i definitely. think another part of the ratio that people don't realize is that you know if you ordered 16 copies or 21 or 29 you you still are only eligible for one you would have to order 30 copies in order to be eligible to order two of the ratio so the math does get a little uh funny you know when you're trying to figure this out yeah with the real high print runs that number normalizes i think and i think it's fair just to take uh, the ratio against the, the large print run number, when they start to get really, really small, it's where it gets a bit murkier. And um, we're going to see a few more examples of that as we go on here, um, certainly in the next book here. Um, th th this is a book that I, I hunted for a very, very long time. Um, huge, huge fan of it. Uh, Avengers Solo number three. This is another one in 15. Uh, this book saw um, you know just over 11,000 copies ordered by retailers. Um, there's currently 23 on the census. And the reason I know that this book is rare is because I've asked Carter Mercenot, as most of you know him, to go find it, and he can't. And if anybody knows Carter, he can find anything. He just pulled uh, a U uh, Ultimate Fallout 4 out of a dollar bin the other day. So the man can find anything, and he hasn't been able to find this. So um, by that standard, this book is exceptionally rare. Uh, but all joking aside, this book is very, very difficult. Super cool. Uh, I love these photorealistic covers, and uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, the cover is just breathtaking. And God, I would love to have that book in a nine eight man. Jesus, it, it it's it, it's such a gorgeous cover, and it embodies uh, Black Widow in such a way, man. You, I, I, that's a must have. You know, I. You, you almost don't want them to reprint it, but man, if they reprinted it, I, I think it would still uh, command a, a heavy price. I, I think a lot of people aren't even aware of it, Joe, to be honest with you. I mean, this is wow. one of those books where unless it's sort of in your wheelhouse, a lot of people don't even know it exists. You know, there's a bunch in this series that are really cool. We're going to touch on another one in a second that's super hard to come by as well. Um, but I think a lot of people just don't know this book's out there. Yeah, um, this book has been sought after by a few of my friends, including myself, um, but I never really thought about it until me and Ben became teammates and friends 
around this time last year and I've been looking for this book, can't find it. Um, I go on to coverprice.com, shout out to Matt DeVoe. Um, and I see one graded copy, a 9.6 that sold in June of 2019. And then um, uh, a few raw, a raw uh, some sales data for a few raw copies, three raw copies that all sold I don't know if this is a coincidence or what, but all sold in the same month within the same week, June of 2019. And I'm talking, uh, this seller fetched, I'm guessing it's probably the same seller. If not, then it's, it, it'd be weird, but this, this, this book fetched between $158 to $449. Jeez. So, uh, yeah. You know, I would paint somebody's house to have that book. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even I didn't even know this book was actually rare. I mean, I I I saw it uh maybe two or three weeks ago along with the next slide. So I'm gonna hopefully the guy uh is not watching this show. I'm gonna go <laughs> grab it. <laughs> Dude, send it to me. I'll fix it the best way that I can. I know it was so mangled, but I don't I don't I don't mind. There's I mean, no such thing. Is this the same <laughs> artist? No such thing with Joe. <laughs> Is this the same artist that did um, like the realistic paintings? Uh, I, I, forget his I name. was just trying to figure that out, Aaron. Um, I don't think it is, but it's very reminiscent. Yeah, I was I was looking in Diamond, and they don't list it like they do the other, like New Avengers thirty three. Um, so I've got mine right here by C from CGC. Yeah, so what are they it Oh, get out of here! You oh, have one. <laughs> Um, it took me forever to find it. Oh, uh, you, oh my God! Um, Al, <laughs> oh, you're a killer, Ben. Barra Nov I, I, I can't see his name, but I don't have it in nine eight. Oh, Maybe who cares? You, you can fix it. Oh um, my God, Al. Bar -a Novo art. It's a, what it says. Man, hold that cover. Nerding. Hold that cover up, Ben. What's that? Oh. Oh my goodness! Well, oh, that's a nice slab. Imagine if you oh, get yeah. it signed by Scarlett. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you lucky son of a gun! <laughs> Jesus! Christ. So I was at a half price books, and I got every cover but that one. And I knew that uh, this was like three or four years ago, and back then it was hard to find. I mean, hey, uh, hey, I mean, Joe. Joe, I've looked for it for years. I honestly, I bought this on January first of this year. I looked for it forever. I will say this: if anybody wants one, there is, I think, a nine four on eBay right now for a few hundred bucks. So I'm just going to put that out there if anybody really wants one. So, okay. um, but I don't see it show up very often at all. Um, you know, let me add something, Ben, and and I, you probably will agree with me on this. You know, I hear a lot of content creators, and you know, shout out to all of them. Much respect. And everybody's entitled to their opinions. But I hear a lot of content creators um, say, you know, any book that's modern, if it's 9-8, I really don't care, blah, 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 blah. With these, you know, and for our listeners, especially if you're on the newer side of speculation, investing, or, you know, digging or what have you, these short-ordered books are, you know, sh uh, I mean, what is there, 700 or less, probably even less than that. Um of this book i mean anything that's you know a nine two or above you should be very happy with and, yeah. it, and you know what if you if you, if it is a nine two then all you have to do is uh hit up my friend joe at red hood <laughs> comics because for some reason he's got the magic press but yeah but ben yeah. i mean would you agree I, with me yeah i would i mean when it comes to really rare books grade doesn't really move the needle for me at all like i it's just about having it frankly i i think about an original piece of art right and i know that's an extreme example if there's one piece do you care what grade it's in right so um the rarer the book the less the grade matters in my opinion and i know that's gonna i i would agree people. um i would i would agree um, I definitely agree. We're, we're going to come on a book that I have in nine six uh, that I got for hundreds of dollars that has been sitting on eBay for at least five years, if not more, for thousands of dollars in a nine eight. Yeah, no, um, yeah, that, that's. I, I think I, I think people who really hunt rare books 
all kind of feel the same way. Um, but why don't we why don't we transition to the next one? So I don't get too hung up here. Um, so this is within the sort of the same run. Um, I, I like this one as well. Maybe not quite as much as the other one, but but I really do like this cover. Um, this was the very end of the series. So you know the orders were starting to get very, very thin. Uh, there were just over 10,000 copies ordered. So to have a 1 in 15 on 10,000 copies, you're talking on average about five copies ordered per retailer. People weren't qualifying, nor did they care to qualify for this book. Um, so um, another one that I really, really like, you know, super hard to find. There's 10 on the census. Now, you know, maybe not a lot of people are grading this book, but people who like to hunt tough books, I mean, th th this is this is one that they they really like to go after because it's, it's it's a special book, and we've got we've got three characters from the MCU, you know, featured in their likeness from the film, right smack dab in the middle. So, um, a book I um, I'm really happy to own. I, I, I have this one too. So before we get started on this one, this book is not a ghost yet, right? This is not a ghost, but. Um, but it has all of the characteristics to be a ghost um, so that you can find this right now. It's not an expensive book uh, yet. That said, it's another one in 15. Uh, these one in 15s that come out later in print runs, these are really done to in incentivize retailers to buy more copies, right? So this book had less than 14,000 copies ordered. It's an absolutely beautiful cover uh, done by Tedesco. Um, really stunning if you've ever seen it in person. And it's an homage to a genuine golden age ghost, a book that you cannot get. Some of the best collectors in the business don't have this book, they've looked for it. Right now there's only five copies of this book on the census. Take that with a grain of salt. I don't think a lot of people have graded it, but um, but this book I, I think could really find its way into the ghost category uh, in the not too distant future, given how stunning it is and, and given how what a great homage it is to this this Patsy Walker here. Um, but um, I just wanted to put it on the list because it really sort of, it, it follows the blueprint of the last three books that we just looked at. Yeah, and also, I mean, it's a it's a good a, a good read. Um, it actually has a little bit of a spec inside the guts. If you're speculating on Hellcat and Jessica Jones, um, I won't spoil the you know what's going on but i could tell you this jessica jones and her reconnect and um yeah it's, it's a very special story it's a great story actually you know All there right. was always that girl in high school that everybody was gawking over and that's what i think about man yeah. when i see that cover yeah it's beautiful man I, I really really like that cover a lot um and like you know you can find them for for 25 bucks or less floating around out there um uh all right so this is ghost racers number four uh, this is a one in 25 um on a book that had less than eighteen thousand copies ordered um you know when you put those sort of two things together you know most retailers aren't ordering enough to qualify for this and you know you know i've never seen this book um I, I think TJ threw it on the list, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, you know, a cool book, and uh, I think one that people are starting to wake up to is being kind of rare. I think even uh, Ben Stein featured this on one of his top ten lists at one point, but uh, but a tough book to come by if you're out there looking for it. Yeah, and this is a Stacy Lee variant, and uh, she's got real high ceiling for books that are hard to find. You got that uh, Spider Woman Alpha variant one and that silk one as well like those i think i've sold for like several hundred or up to close to a thousand or maybe more a nine eight it's super desirable and stacy lee was very very ahead of her time doing these animation style drawings on these covers and i think this is the final issue of this mini series and last books are always harder to find with shorter print run I love this book. Yeah, I wish I had it, man. I, I have never been able to find it. Shout out to TJ Timebomb, one of our newest members of the Modern Playbook team. Great. Call. All right. So I think this is TJ as well. Uh, this one isn't quite as hard to find, um, uh, but no cool, no, no less cool, that's for sure. Super beautiful cover here um, by Juan um, Gideon. 
Um, this is another one in 25 on a slightly higher number of copies ordered. Falls into the sort of books that, you know, are really, really tough to track down if you're hunting for them. All right, so this was uh, put on the list by uh, by Nico. Uh, he he was uh, he he couldn't join us tonight. He was hoping to. I don't have a lot of information on this book, but base we're looking at here at Kickass number three, uh, the second printing, just ten on the census, and uh, I think a lot of, a lot of savvy collectors know that this book is 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 pretty scarce. I think some of the people in the room right now may actually have this, uh, but a book that you don't see very often and uh it's super cool super cool i'd love to have it yeah i remember the i do have a copy and i remember the reason i sought it out was not because it was second print but uh i wanted the first hit girl so this also has uh key content or you know key first appearance in it because the other covers have her backside shown i believe this is the only cover that actually has her front side shown. i think that's yeah. right richie you can't see her on the other one so there were so many covers to <laughs> throughout this first series. Oh yeah, that's yeah, like I, back. I was a big uh, kick-ass collector. Yeah, I mean, Malara was. I mean, he was on fire for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Well, well, I mean, he's taking literally taking over Netflix when it comes to comic content. Yeah, he's, you know, it's paying off. Next is mask mask number one. Uh, one in 50. I, I believe this was a Mighty Mail V pick. Correct, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm trying to keep all of this straight. Um, but a book that's um, but that's super, super hard to come by. Uh, I couldn't find it anywhere out there. Um, there's just six copies on the census. These IDW books were not being ordered uh, in high volume. Uh, so, to, so to order 50 of them, um, you know, places this book in, in really, really short supply. Anybody have any thoughts on this one? I, I don't know a lot about it um, other than you can't find it. Anybody know who who did the art? I'm looking right now. I've heard, I've heard a lot of speculation that Mask, it, whether it's animation or live action, is is inevitable. Hmm. It's not even on the... Uh... Yeah, I, I wonder, you know, if it's for real. Because we hear about that about, like, every... I'll say second tier toy franchise, you know, but I guess the, the tier below like Transformers, right. G.I. Joe, He-Man, you know, we're always hearing Micronauts, you know, Mask, Voltron. I, I heard the other day that Hasbro is trying to build some kind of a, of a universe with G.I. Joe and that Mask is definitely part of that. Right. So I, I don't have any firsthand information, but I've heard a few things that that's, that's yeah, that's what we have. Yeah, they, that I feel like they first announced that five years ago, and we haven't seen much yet. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised IDW has a one in fifty. I think that's what shocks me the most about this. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Good point. Yeah, that is a good point. All right. So this is Aquaman four, a DCU variant. When it comes to the DCU variants, there's only one man who can talk about this stuff, and it is Steve. What do you got, my man? Well, credit where credit's due. I mean, I when I first got into DCUs, the CGC forums were a incredible resource for me, and they continue to be, and I formed some good uh, friendships there. And, um, and so... On the, so on that ongoing thread that's been going on for years in the CGC Copper Forum for DC Universe variants, this uh, on in January 2018, this user Little R and R Comics posted that he found this Aquaman for DCU, and uh, I think in 2016 and 2017. I found some DCUs that had never been found before, and this guy found Aquaman 4. And there's been several that have been found, it seems, every year, at least at least one uh, every year, which is just incredible. But so, yeah, up until 2018, no one even realized this existed. I think part of it just comes from a, a lot of these were distributed 
first by Toys R Us, but some of the later ones were distributed through Kmart. And, you know, I think some were short packed in, in, in two packs. Uh, but it's hard to say, actually, where the the origin of this, whether it was in a, a two pack or what have you. But, you know, hey, you've got Aquaman with the hook arm. You've got Lobo on there who, you know, some people like. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a, a big fan, but I, I think there's someone else on here who is in the same camp, but then there's someone else who's in the opposite camp. But so yeah, Aquaman four, I don't, that, this is one of the DCUs I, I don't have. I'd love to get a copy. Uh, feel free to reach out to me on IG or in the comments. If you have one, I'll, I'll, uh, I, I'd probably cough up a, a nice sum for this. All-Star Comics number one, the RRP variant. Uh, this is another Steve pick. Steve, what do you got on this one? Right. So I was referring earlier to a 9.6 that I bought for a couple hundred versus a 9.8 that's been sitting out there for years and years for a couple thousand dollars. I think I think it, the, the fellow wants 3,000 or, or so. I uh, never could get him to come down. And then I saw, I want to say, maybe it was a My Comic Shop uh, auction and, and picked up the 9.6 for a couple hundred. And I'm I'm plenty happy to have it. So this is a real RRP variant. RRP gets thrown around, but really uh, the term refers to a DC comic specific program for retailers. Uh, this was given away at DC's, RRP meeting in 1999 that was held in Baltimore, Maryland. And there's just, you, you don't see it. I mean, I had searches for years going on in eBay trying to surface another copy, whether raw or graded, uh, never did. And and that copy, if anyone wants a 9.8 and wants to shout out a couple thousand dollars, I'm pretty sure it's still up there. Last time I looked, um, I don't even look anymore because I've got my 9.6 and I, I only want one and uh, you know, if, if I've come across one in bins, that's fine, but I'm happy to have the one I have. Yeah. I want to talk real quickly for one second on, you know, the high grades, you know, a, a lot of these high people, these high grades are, are intended to create scarcity out of super common books, right? So that's why people are chasing the highest grade they can get because it creates some degree of scarcity around super common books, that, the, that that's the idea. So when you're talking about a book that's rare to begin with, you know, the, the, the grade distinction, in my opinion, doesn't carry nearly as much weight, it doesn't carry nearly as much weight. And, um, and I think that's why a lot of people here, um, when you're chasing books that are really tough to come by, the grade doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I feel that way about, about a lot of books. And it's because I have no intention of really reselling any of these books exactly. I'm, buying, I'm buying them for myself so it's just something to keep in mind um i'm not saying that's a cardinal rule but i think that's a way a lot of us feel in this hobby when we're when we're chasing super rare books and i don't want to speak for anybody else here nice. no um, no i mean at the end of the day ben i mean you know growing up with comics i mean what the distinction of nine six and nine eight they're both near mint yeah i mean a true near mint is a 10 and how many of those are floating out there not many so we make a big deal about nine eight and you know that being the the premium and 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 the end all but a nine six is still a near mint copy so I, I don't think people should poo-poo a 9.6 uh, to a 9.8. And am I saying they should be the same value or equal? I'm not. But a 9.6 is a high, high-tier book to own. Yeah, virtually uh, perfect in every way, right? I ab mean absolutely. You're talking uh, uh, half a millimeter of a flaw, you know, so... Um, don't get so caught up in, in, in just wanting nine eights and thinking a nine six is is not valuable. Nine sixes are 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 just as important as a nine eight. Uh, there's well, not many tens, you know. Wouldn't 
wouldn't a true near mint, like you were saying, a true near mint book actually be a nine four and a ten oh would be a gym mint book? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, is- yeah. Based off of old uh, Overstreet, so Overstreet was the first to really uh, set a standard for for grading back in the seventies. Right. Right. You know, and and you're absolutely right, Dollar. I mean, a nine four was kind of the distinction based off of, uh, and a lot of it was the spine. You know, what where they saw the spine, and they started grading books based off of uh, docking each corner, and then assessing the spine, assessing the front color ref- reflectivity, uh, and then the back. And then proceeding to the pages and right. any uh, any flaws <laughs> on the pages and page count, what have you. But, you know, 9, 4, 9, 6, 9, 8, you know, it's so always... Mistaken, but wasn't the highest grade in Overstreet 9, 2? 9, 2. That was the highest. Yeah, at one time, minus. Minus. yes. Yes. But, you know, so you get a third-party authentication... And they needed to set their standard, and so Overstreet and and uh, CGC and and I guess this would be a, a conversation for uh, uh, what's his name at at CBCS and how that transpired, um, but um, you know there was no continuity with Overstreet and CGC when when they first started in in what the early two thousands so. Um, it confused a lot of people. I can so. tell you personally, I mean, for our listeners, if you don't know me and Joe, we press books. Uh, ben also presses books too, but he does his own own stuff. But we press books for other people. And before I was started pressing in uh, January 2018, um, I'd say, what, 2016, 2017, when I was getting truly back into comics, um, I looked at a book completely different than what I do today. When I grab a book today out of the dollar bin or I go on eBay and I look at, you know, with the mag with the cursor and the magnifier, I'm going, I don't, I don't even really, I take a glance at the other stuff. But the first thing I'm going to do is the spine. That's the first thing I, I go, I, I examine close. And, um, you know, if that spine is cherry, as long as there's no tear soils or what have you, I, I know that, you know, I'm going to do pretty good with that one. You know, and a lot of time, you know, these books come from Diamond or, you know, and they're shipped. And and, and it's hard to have a 9-8. A it's hard because they're not even coming from the from the printer that way. So, right. I mean, well, I mean, it's just it, and it's an opinion. I mean, you got to collect what you like. And, uh, and you know, nine, six, nine, eight, if, if you're looking for a scarce book, a nine, six and a scarce book, I mean, you should be happy with that. I mean, because number one, there's not many out there. So nine, six, nine, eight. I mean, to me, there's no difference. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. That's exactly and, it. And um, basic, basic economics tells us right now, especially with the market right now, that night. I mean, we should be scooping up these nine sixes. Absolutely. Uh, the, the the price differential is on 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 a lot of these. I, I won't give you a percentage, but I would say, you know, a lot of them uh, is so big that you know you would think, especially when the nine eights, especially with the market inflating and 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 these nine eights being so sought after and they're just spiking. To levels that are just unaffordable, these nine sixes are going to start be looking, uh, being looked at as the next best thing, and still being, you know, very high grade. So, uh, yeah, I would be scooping up nine sixes in these yeah. rare comics. Absolutely, yeah, that, that, that's good advice, Richie, for sure, for sure. Um, okay, uh, on on to the next book here. What? Have, uh, all right, another DC book uh, and a promotional book. So that only means. <laughs> Uh, one man. So, in Midway Games, released in 2002, a game for the Nintendo Game Boy Advance called Justice League and Justice for All. And I don't know the details. I don't know if anyone knows the details of 
how Midway distributed this Justice League Adventures comic, uh, issue number seven, that had their logo of it. Maybe it was at a video game trade show. Uh, but I, th this one, th there's a couple Justice League Adventure promo comics out here. This is one that I've never been able to get a copy of. Uh, it's kind of like the the like the Aquaman 4 DCU that I don't have. Uh, would love to have a copy, and honestly, yeah, I don't I don't care what grade this is in, and especially if this was handed it out at a trade show uh, that's not comics related specifically. It's probably not in high grade. Uh, but I, I'd love to have a copy in, in any grade just because I collect DC promo comics and I've even gotten into collecting Marvel promo comics. So um, uh, this just proves, uh, you know, when, when you're searching through bins, uh, li lift the books all the way up so you can see the what's in the bottom left or bottom right corner. This was given away at the E1. Just joking. Really? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Be because I know there are some e promo at, at E3. I've never heard of E1, though, Aaron. Are you full? Is that don't, they add, don't, don't they add a number every year? <laughs> I don't think it's, so. No. Dang it. I tried making a joke and it didn't work. <laughs> no, old, man. But I'm not that old. There, there's a mention of uh, Harley Quinn uh, in a letter to the editor. <laughs> um, all right, so this is a Mighty Mel V pick. Uh, My Little Pony, number four. Now, listen, there is a cult of My Little Pony collectors that I don't fully understand, but it is a thing. It's a real, real thing. Uh, this is a one in ten on a book that had about 6,000 ordered. None on the census. I know Mel wants this book. Um, it's really not out there. Um <laughs> Um, but uh, but the, the, you know this the, this this book is in demand, and if you see it, you should be grabbing it and selling it to Mel. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. It's a unicorn. She's a unicorn, right? Yeah, it's nightmare. She's a pony. She's a it's pony. Like nightmare Moon or something like night. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty popular character within the uh, the My Little Pony universe, it's a which pony, I know. Man. Thought nothing about, nothing about. Mel um, likes these. Uh, like she, he likes dinosaurs. Now he likes ponies. Is there he anything likes, in the guts of it? Too. Uh, I have no idea. I, I think it's just a super, super rare book. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. But um, anyway, let's keep uh, let's keep the ball rolling here. And uh, so this was uh, Tony's pick. Uh, he collects uh, these purple rain covers. This is Snake Eyes Storm Shadow number 19, the purple rain variant. Uh, this book is super uh, uh, highly sought after. Um, there's just over 20 on the census. And uh, I think a book that most of us recognize, but likely never have. It, it, to me, it's probably the best uh, homage to uh, purple rain cover. Yeah, there's a few of them. There's a few of them. It's it's definitely Tony's thing, but this one is uh, real difficult to, to get. Uh, this is another promotional comic, uh, Justice League uh, of America number 27, uh, DC Nation promo. Uh, there were none on the census that I could find. Uh, Steve, what do you know about this one? So I believe, uh, you know, uh, un unlike some of the... Uh, <laughs> Some other personalities out there. I'm not. I'm not big at patting myself on the back, but I'm pretty sure I discovered this comic that no one else knew about this. I didn't know about it. I, I was so, so. DC Nation was a panel that was held at different cons um, during Dan Didio's reign at, at at DC. I'll say from about 2006 to about uh, 20. Uh, 11 or 12. So sometimes at these DC Nation panels, they'd give away to the attendees uh, some books and they'd have this that orange banner along the bottom of the comic. And so there's a there's one there's a flash one, there's a Wonder Woman one. And, and so I think I was looking for one of those other ones and I came across this one 
that I'd never seen anyone mention before or, or as far as I know since. So I, from what I understand, there was a milestone panel at a con, I forget which con, um, and this was given out to the attendees. Of course, this was during one of the many eras where DC, you know, claimed they were bringing back the milestone characters. You know, it's happening again, right? Uh, with this upcoming month, they're going to do a uh, try once again to bring milestone in uh, into the DC fold, and you know, make make them, uh, you know, uh, bring them bring them back to their, their to their glory. Um, so. Uh, yeah, th and so this has the same cover. It's just the DC Nation banner. I I, I might have the only copy that, that I know of out there. Uh, obviously, there were attendees of the panel, but, th you know, they're, they're stuck in, you know, personal collections or thrown away because th these were given away. There's nothing significant about this uh, comic uh, besides that DC Nation banner at the bottom. Um, you could say this is probably the rarest milestone related comic out there. Other than that, uh, only only real ner nerds like me really, you know, love something like this. <laughs> this is a great example, though, of why you know some of us like hunting ghosts. They may not mean anything to anybody else, but they mean something to us, and we love we we love hunting for them. So that's that that's a real real fun part of this hobby. This isn't always about dollar value. It's just about finding something that other people don't have. Right. Right. It doesn't need to be a MCU or DCU content about it. You know, we love that stuff and we thrive on it. But uh, this is another part of the game that, and, you know, this is, this is speculation as well. We're speculating that these books, you know, um, are going to stay in our collection for a long time. <laughs> You know, and you know, and and if it's like those earlier books, like Ben, Ben showed with the beautiful art, uh, the Adam Hughes cover, uh, My Little Pony, or what have you, even this one with uh, with uh, you know, Steve's the first guy to, to to find this book. Hey, you know what? We're speculating that possibly these could become something that, like Ben says, uh, sought after, and you can't find them, so people will pay top dollar. That's speculation as well. Did you put your store Absolutely. stamp on the cover? <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't want to. I, I, I mean, that's the thing about the, these books. Like, I would never sell this book. I, I just, I wouldn't. I mean, if I had a second copy, yeah, sure, but I'd sell it. I mean, why have two copies of it? I mean, I, I love it and it's special, but. Uh, but I mean, I mean, I'm I'm so happy to just have that one copy, and uh, if I have that one copy for the rest of my life, uh, I'll be I'll be happy. And you know, there's no amount of money that that could make me part with it. Maybe you could make a movie with I don't know Robert Redford and Woody Harrelson, and <laughs> you know where they they try to get it from me. But that sounds like a pretty boring and absurd movie. So no, the the yeah. you know. Steve, there's people that collect books and then there's people that love books. Right. So you only look for these things if you truly have a passion exactly. for this hobby. Because if you don't, I mean, it, it, it'll get old and it'll get old fast and you'll get burnt out. And these are the things to keep to keep our hobby fresh. Exactly. Looking, for, looking for ghost books, looking for for uh, spectacular artwork. I mean, this is what keeps uh, the hobby for me fresh and, and exciting because if you're just looking to collect to flip and, and make money, you know, you, you can make money doing this thing, you know, there's no doubt, but there is no doubt you will get burnt out. So you've got to love this thing. It's a beast. And if you don't, it'll eat you up. Yeah, well said, Joe. Really well said, man. Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, so we got an Adam Hughes book here. I mean, Adam Hughes is a modern monster uh, for, for cover art. Uh, this is considered one of his uh, rarest books. Um, 
there's only 14 on the census. There's one copy currently listed on eBay for five grand. Just a really, really difficult book to track down. Um, I certainly don't have it. Um, I've never seen it, um, but a book that fetches a super high price uh, if you ever come across it. One, one thing I just uh, looked up, it, it was a, a one in 10 variant. So that makes it more challenging. Yeah, yeah. I, I did not know that. I would have added it to this slide if I did know that. I, I don't know what the original print run on Uncharted number one was, but it must have been pretty small uh, for this book to be so scarce uh, for an artist that so many people love. If I didn't have a, a, a full time job, I, you know, <laughs> would have uh, added it earlier. I'm sorry. <laughs> Isn't Tom Holland slated to play uh, the lead character in Uncharted? I, I think they're like they're either like shooting for locate. I mean, looking at locations or whatever. But he's been cast. Yeah, you're to, right. You're right. To, to yeah. play like <laughs> this book could be ten thousand in no time, man. Oh man. Yeah. That's crazy. All right, so this is a book that I don't think anybody gives a shit about other than me, but I could not find it forever. Uh, this is Forgive Me Father number two. Um, this is a Jeff Deckel cover C variant. Um, this book is by every definition a ghost. I, I love Deckel. Um, I know other people appreciate him for sure. I, Aaron, for one, is a fan as well. I'm a fan. Um, book, huge yeah, I looked and looked and looked and couldn't find this book everywhere. I mean, I searched high and low and uh, I was finally able to find one. Um, but uh, just stunning cover art. Um, th there's nothing to spec on here. Um, it's But it is a ghost by every standard. Uh, there's five on the CG, uh, CGC census. There's five more on the CBCS census all autographed uh, one i have one of those books um but um i don't know this is a book i'll never let go because it took me so damn long to find um but uh um yeah just just a book i personally like i'm probably gonna order one from the store that bans people from buying books <laughs> there's a long <laughs> story there yeah, that, that oh, store, man. when it finally sent, it wasn't even the right book when it was all said and done. So, oh, wow. Um, that's the craziest <laughs> part of all of that. that that's a mile-long story. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Ben? The, this book just looks expensive. <laughs> I mean, does that make sense? I yeah. mean, this, this book just looks like a $200 book. Just yeah, without, man. if you put this book up with not even uh, any kind of a description, I would say, how much is that book? She looks I, really out, expensive. I, real, I, I wasn't sure it was real. Oh, time. get out of here. You have that one too? Oh, my God. You got um, both? Oh, man. This wow. is a this by Jackal, but I wasn't sure it was real, man. I, I took me so, I, I, I looked high and low. I, I even reached out shit. to the guys who created it, the Creature uh, Entertainment guys. And they didn't have any, nor could they give me any information about it. Like, hey, so I was you, to wonder, maybe this book never happened. Hey, can you hold that cover up again, man? Oh, my goodness. And yeah. he signed it, too? Yeah. He must have done a signing on these, because there's five signed. So, um, wow. Uh, nice. There's that on the back. Oh, no. <laughs> Are you serious? The yeah, detail man. that I, I like is... um. You know, but I also find confusing because the book's titled "Forgive Me, Father," and and the detail is she has a cross tattooed um, on the sort of the small of her back. So, I, you know, at first I think she's a really religious girl. Yeah, but... she, she's Catholic. Okay, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, hey, man, yeah. I, I I I've already forgiven her. You know. <laughs> 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 and I think the other character in the book is a, uh, is a preacher. All right. So this the, this book required a little bit of censoring. Um, uh, a Mighty Male V pick. <laughs> Faust um, is not a book that I, I've read, but it's has the reputation of being uh, very edgy. And, you know, maybe not Jen Bartel edgy of the modern age, but, but edgy nonetheless. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the book you really can't, you really can't find. Um, 
uh, this entire series was, uh, you know, by its own standards at the time, um, you know, sort of as out there as you can get. But, but but this book has been gobbled up by collectors in their PCs, and you never see it. Uh, there's nine on the census, and uh, the most common cover you see is a white sketch cover, which was probably a lot easier to get by sensors and things. So uh, it makes sense. But yeah, the, the, this version is, is, is a book that uh, um, you may never see. Did you say gobbled up? <laughs> 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 yes, 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 I did, Rich. Oh, that's and actually a good, good statement for that Bartell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, All right. sorry, Before, inside joke. All right. Um, so you, this is Smallville number one. This is a second print. Uh, you would think this would be a Steve book. That's what I thought when I put it up here, but it is not. I think it might have been TJ again, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, um, TJ. Um, but but this book is uh, is you know really really difficult um, to come by. Um, I had a hard time finding it on the census. Sleepy helped me uh, track down some information on this one. Um, but a book that you're probably not going to find. That said, this precisely is the kind of book that's probably out there in dollar bins. So if you ever see it, man, grab it um, because this this would be a home run. Yeah, I saw I saw it listed for like. One on Amazon for one hundred seventy nine ninety nine, and then I saw one that sold on eBay a few months ago for almost two hundred bucks. Wow. Yeah. it's yeah. crazy. You know, there, there's, there's a comic collectors that know what they have, you know, and know how to price it, you know, because, uh, you know, there are so many books. I mean, you've got to have a keen eye. And and question, you know, this seems different, you know, and and look at the whole cover and look at the back and see if it's a very uh, uh, store. Ex yeah, look at the barcode. Look at see if it's a store exclusive. You know, when you're out there looking in the wild, you got to question everything and and really look at the front and the back, and and that's the only way you can find some scarce books if you just flip through them like. You know, like you're in a hurry, you're you're never really gonna uh, find any gold. Yeah, I mean, you gotta dig and dig and dig and dig. The best place to dig, by far, at least for me and here in Cali, is the bins on the floor underneath yes. the top bins. That's where all the gold is. Savvy Absolutely. advice. Savvy advice. Well said. All right, what do we got next here? Okay, Street Fighter versus Darkstalkers number 10. I forget who put this one on the list. Um, I think it was Carter. Carter. Pretty um, sure. Yeah, so this is an art germ variant, um, a beautiful art germ variant. Uh, this is a 1 in 20 on a book that had less than 10,000 copies ordered. Um, there are 37 on the census, and um, this was just featured on Matt DeVoe's um, he calls it um, his uh, not bangers, but um, what, what's the term? Mover, shakers or movers? Shakers, shakers on the shakers movers, list. Yeah. So um, we actually had it on here before that hit. So we're not stealing this from Matt, but we're going to give him full credit uh, because um, that's a great list. If you're not following it, um, he does his recap is is the best read I do every single week. Um, um, but, but Carter had this on there before that, that, that number hit, uh, that book hit, um, but, but, a, but a super sought after book, um, that's catching, you know, big, big prices. I forget what it sold for. I want to say it was six or 700. Um, but, uh, but a really cool book and our germ is, is only getting hotter and hotter. Wait till you see the books that, uh, Matt DeVoe provided for us to compare for dealer flip side. Oh, I'm sure they're brilliant, man. I, 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 I got to be on that episode. I got to be on that one. Matt, Matt is a, a gem of the industry. He's actually part of the group. He's never been on a show, but he is in the chat giving advice, sharing information. Really solid guy if, if you don't know him. All right. And uh, I think this is the last book of the night. Um, King James. This is a Josh Middleton variant. I don't really think this book exists, but Steve's about to convince us that it does. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I really should have prepared more and had it handy. I don't. So 
so uh, as I was putting together my master list of DC promo comics, you know, I came across this King James comic and like, so, uh, so this was the uh, second promotion that Power A did with uh, LeBron James. For this comic, there were four covers. For the first comic, there were 10 covers. Um, and you can tell the cover artist for each of them because they're they're credited right below the the writer and interior artist. So you can see Joshua Milton. So I was searching uh, for just the images so that I could use them on my website. And I came across the original art for this. And I, I can't, I want to say maybe it was Heritage sold the original art, but it may, it may not have been. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I see this Josh Middleton cover for K King James. But meanwhile, I can't find the actual comic. Somehow I did manage to track it down, uh, and and I have never found a copy since. I, I, don't, I don't I don't I don't know how the four different covers were distributed. There was two that were standard uh, giveaways. There was one that was military, uh, but that's a Sonny Lee cover, and you would think that's the rarest. And then there's also a version with a sketchbook inside, but that's not this one. So this is one of the two standard covers, but I, I, I the, the other, uh, so there's a Sonny Lee cover, a JG Jones cover and a James Jean cover, but this Middleton one is, is, is a ghost. Um, and, and people, uh, someone just asked earlier and backstage before the show, who, who's the girl on the cover? Um, and, to be honest, I, I'd have to dig my copy out and, and read it to tell you. Um, so, uh, but all the interiors of the all four, it doesn't matter which cover you have. The interiors are the same. Um, so if you're really curious, get, buy, buy one of the more common versions of this and you too can find out who is the mystery woman. <laughs> but uh Good, you know, just like a lot of Josh Middleton's work, very, very, very nice, very, very uh, quality work. And somewhere out there, someone owns the or original art to this. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, Middleton, uh, th there was a point in his career where his stuff was just perfect. He, his art evolved over time, but yes. this era of his is my favorite. Uh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Hey, Perfect. let me add, I want to add something. Um, I, you know, for for our listeners, viewers, um, I've been on this team for almost a year now with these guys. And, you know, since I joined the speculation investment uh, circle, um, not the most positive uh, uh, circle, but this team, I'm telling you, we all get along. We're, we all have a good time. We all respect each other's opinion. And I'm having a blast. I love these guys, and I'm telling you, this is a this is the time of my life. So just uh, just don't worry, be happy, and don't stress out on whose spec is spec. It's all comics. Oh, well said, and, Richie. Well said. And real quick, uh, I wanted to give a, a shout out to JJ Maxwell for helping me find a modern ghost. Holy so shit. Wow. So this is the uh, Something is Killing the Children, number six, one in 25. I probably spent way too much money on it, but, you know, Damn. I had to have it. Man, hold it up again, Eric. Ghost, man, that is a ghost. Aaron, yeah, so up. this, oh so my the, God. for all you Something is Killing the Children chasers, you know, this is, you know, the most probably sought after book that's part of the series. That's oh, not that's, a story variant. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah so, oh. yeah, nice. I mean. Don't nice worry, Joe. Job. You'll be seeing it soon to be uh, to be pressed. So, <laughs> thank you for everyone for joining us tonight. Real, real, quick, um, real quick, before we, we hope you enjoyed that as much as we enjoyed presenting it. Um, stay tuned. Um, we've got a new segment next week of Down the Rabbit Hole, led by our man Richie. It'll be a really fun one. So please make sure you tune in next week, and uh, we're we're uh, we're we're going to be excited to present that one.